So some of you have asked to hear about DJ Horror Stories, and I'm going to read one to you from a essay that I wrote in this book that I put out called Chastity Shawl. So here we go. DJ Horror Story. In 2022, I was DJing a wedding with assistant Jetty. Jetty's in their young 20s, slightly nerdy, and somewhat cocky. We were setting up a gorgeous downtown venue. The owners were two beautiful, middle-aged, sociable people. Sociable people. Think of Bonnie and Clyde if they opened an event space, and Clyde had a sexy Latin spin. I'm going to hook you up with the best drink in the house, Clyde explained with a giant grin. It's going to be so smooth. Do you like tequila? When building new headquarters, does a giant corporation look for a local tax break? Of course I like tequila. Clyde ran off to the bar to make us a drink. It's always a better time when the establishment is appreciative. Granted, I'm being paid to do a service, but it could be a bit sour when at event space acts like they're the ones paying you. I've had event owners who demanded we pick up our gear by unachievable time results. Owners who fed us like dogs, uh, and even event spaces where we were blamed for the event space's limitations. Clyde returned with a deep brown beverage, which confused me. The only deep brown tequila-based liquid I've ever seen was a apple pie margarita, and given the floating orange slice in the drink, I didn't think tequila was in the drink. It's bourbon with orange, Clyde said. Eternally, I was vomiting. I hated dark liquors like bourbon and whiskey. I could slam back an apple royal shot in a liquor emergency, uh, but even that feels like I'm on the brink of death. But with Clyde being so friendly, I had no choice but to sip on the drink. Clyde watched as if I was meeting his beloved. How is it? Clyde said. Delicious, I said with full enthusiasm. Considering the drink contained my nemesis, the end result was too bad. It was palpable, but how many times do we get through with slightly uncomfortable things for the people we love or even just like? And I didn't know Clyde from previous experiences, but based on what I did know, the man had a generous heart and his homemade whiskey cocktail went down a throat that otherwise would have refused passage. We are going to get you the best meals in the house too, Clyde exclaimed, eager with excitement to share the food with us. I can't break that man's heart, Jetty sighed, struggling to get through his cocktail. Like me, Jetty was anti-whiskey. No, he's too nice, I said, taking a sip and feeling my throat protest casually. It wasn't a riot, but it was undoubtedly an upset rumble. Clyde returned later with the best dish in the house, which featured a giant hunk of salmon. Some would have been swimming in the delights of a perfectly cooked, natural-looking salmon slice, but both Jetty and I hated fish. Jetty later told me he loved shrimp because... It tastes like the sauce you dunk it into. To me, this doesn't feel like you like shrimp. Saying I love shrimp because of the sauce is like saying you like the house because of the land around the house. Even if the yard looks great, what's the point if the cottage is untenable? Do you live on the lawn instead? Oh no, I whispered when Clyde had left. The best food in the house is seafood, and I hate seafood. Well, what are we going to do? Jenny muttered. Because I like Clyde, I ate half of the salmon before realizing I couldn't do this to my body. My throat, already coated with whiskey, was buckling as I put the tinny, musky salmon in my mouth. To be fair, it would have been perfect for someone who enjoyed salmon, but I'd instead take the second or third best dish in the house that had no fish. Jenny and I smuggled the salmon off the plate into napkins and over to the trash. You would have thought we were trying to covertly plant a bomb. Later on, Clyde returned and asked us how the food was, and we both raved about the food in an Emmy award-winning performance. It didn't feel like a lie. The food was phenomenal. Our taste palettes were just children unable to drink bourbon and salmon. So, little excerpt from an essay in this book. So, uh, it's available. Actually, the audiobook's available on Audible. So, if you have Audible, you get the audiobook to Chastity Shaw. I mean, Matt Reaper. And, uh, yeah, you get an ebook or a hard copy. And, uh, yeah, it's full of just kind of quirky observational humor. I don't normally write in this style, but uh, yeah, I'll hopefully read some more another time.